Hello there and welcome to Beads Jar, I'm Natalia and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this bracelet which we've called Frosted Battenberg because of the, the little Battenberg style cake pattern on it. I'm going to be using Delica beads here in Ato, slightly larger than I would normally use and um, I'm going to be taking you through step by step how to make this beautiful piece of jewellery. So let's have a look and see what you're going to need to make it. So here's what you'll need to make this Frosted Battenberg bracelet with peyote stitch. So I am using some Ato Delica beads by Miyuki and these are in hot pink and raspberry colour. Then we also have some galvanised silver Miyuki seed beads and these are also Ato. We have a metallic round silver plated clasp. And, um, and this is uh, also magnetic, so it's uh, a lot easier to secure your bracelet using one of those. I'm using a size 11 beading needle. And then because we're doing POT stitch, I'm also using one of these quick start POT stitch cards. I just find them easier to use. And these are the ones that are dedicated to size 8C beads. You'll also need some fire line. So I'm using some eight pound fire line and I'm using the crystal color and um, we'll also need some cutters to be able to cut your fire line with. So let's get started and make the bracelet. So first of all, I have threaded some fire line onto my beading needle and you're gonna need a really good long length of fire line. So I've got about um, an eighth of, sorry, um, 0.8 of a meter long length and I've just doubled it over. So make sure that you, uh, you give yourself lots of thread because this is quite a long bracelet and you're going back and forth weaving with a peyote stitch. I've attached myself a stop bead. I've just used one of the, the Ato Miyuki seed beads that we're going to be using later on in the project just to, uh, to tie that off at the end and stop the beads from coming off. And leave yourself a really decent length of tail on there. So leaving about eight to 10 centimeters so that you can finish your bracelet off uh, using the excess thread. Then I'm taking the Quick Start POT card. And so these are, there's actually a product review where I show you how to use this in great detail. So if you have a look for that video, um, you'll be able to see the, the uh, in-depth step-by-step -step of how to use this card, but I'm going to show you very quickly here. So you'll see there's a little hole there. I'm going to take my needle up through it that hole on the right hand side and that means that my stop bead stays within that hole and then there's another hole at the top I'm going to take my needle down through there and this is a classic way of beginning purity stitch but using these cards it's just easier it just keeps all of the, the beads reined in so then I'm going to take my needle up through that first little groove it almost looks like a, a tooth shape on the right hand side and we're only going to need two beads um, across to, and then we're just going to go long with, with the bracelet. So I'm going to begin with a pink or hot pink bead. So I'm just going to thread that on here. And then you take your needle back down through that same hole, keeping your, oops, keeping your um, tail thread out of your way so that it doesn't get uh, Oops, it's stuck. Thread always wants to catch onto anything that has corners on it, so that the edge of this, this bead board has corners on it. And you just need to make sure when you, you're putting your bead on, on that, that first row that they are facing the right way round and that the, the stitch isn't twisted. It just wants to twist itself. So I'm just going to do that, make sure. There you go. So you want it sitting upright on top. And then I'm going to take one of the raspberry coloured ones and I'm going to go up through the next groove with my needle. So this is just like an easy peasy way of doing POT stitch. So I'm taking my raspberry colored bead and I'm going back down through that groove. And then making sure that my thread is nice and neat so that they both sit up straight like that. Then we'll turn my, my card around. And because we've got an even an even count peyote stitch. We're going to go back up with the needle through the next groove 
And in order to do this, almost it looks like a Battenberg pattern. And the reason I've called it Battenberg is um, the ladies in the office were saying to me, oh, it looks like a Battenberg cake. So I thought, right, I'll go with that. So what you want to do is you want three rows of each of the colors. So because we've got the raspberry color, it looks not more like a purple actually, but anyway, we've got this raspberry colored bead. So I'm going to take another one. And I'm just going to go through that first one with my needle. And then you need to go, so you're, you're alternating with the colors. So you're going to take a hot pink colored bead and then you're going to go through the hot pink colored bead on your card. So making sure that your, your beads are as straight as they can be. The first row of peyotes always a looks a little bit wibbly wobbly, wonky. So my needle's getting tangled up in the thread. So I'm going to turn around again. Remember I said we need um, a row of three. So because I've got um, one bead there, we need another, another two really. So we're going to go through that bead that's uppermost sticking out. And then, so we're alternating the colors. So I'm going to take a raspberry colored bead and then go through the raspberry colored bead on my card. And it is literally like doing this. So I'm going to take you to the first row just to show you how it's done. So again, we want to do a row of three, so we're taking another raspberry color to complement that one. Just pull everything tight. And then another hot pink colored bead is going through the bead that's sticking up. So because these are larger sizes, size eight delicas, it means that you can get your bracelet made quite quite quickly, quicker than you would with, uh, with smaller beads. It's going to go through my needle through the hot pink bead with another hot pink colored bead there. So you can see I've got my first row of three. So when I get back to there, I'm going to be going on to the, the purpley color, the, the raspberry color. So I just need to finish this row off here with the raspberry color. Sure my tail thread doesn't get in the way. And when I turn around this time, you will see that I just need one more raspberry color to complete that row of three. So remember, whenever you do a raspberry, you're doing a pink next. So pink one going in there to complete that second row along with three. And here is where, when I turn, I'm going to go, I've got my, my row of three hot pink, I've got my th row of three raspberries, so I'm going to begin with raspberry on top of there to create my pattern. And so we're taking the needle through the pink bead. Remember, we're always alternating. So wherever we've done um, a raspberry color, we need a pink one thereafter. So my needle is going through my raspberry color with hot pink. So there you go. So um, that is how you do it. So you're creating rows of three. So here, because I've got my three purple ones, I would start with pink again. And you just create the length of the bracelet that you need. So here is uh, the piece that I've finished already. So I've got that to the length that I need it. So you just need to measure your wrist or the wrist of the person who you're making this for. And you can see the beautiful pattern that you get. It's, it does look like the, the sort of checkerboard pattern that you get on a Battenberg cake. So now we just need to release our beads from the card. And I'll show you how to do that. It's very, very straightforward. So you just need to take your beading needle and you can see that the tail thread is, has been caught in there. It does get caught a little bit when you're doing that. So you just need to release it. And then make sure that you don't tie your stop bead on too tightly. You're just gonna remove it like that, pull it off. And then using your beading needle, just release those threads. Do that very carefully so you can use your card again. 
sometimes it's hard to see the crystal colored thread against the white background of the card. And I'm just taking that off very carefully. And then that's released my bracelet from there. Okay, and you'll see you've got your two threads. I've got my, my stop bead thread there and my working thread. So I'm going to show you what we need to do next and bringing in the galvanized silver 8 beads. I'm going to use a few of these. And so first of all, they are going to be embellishing the end. Let's bring my finished piece in, I'll show you. We just need to attach these just as a, a nice finishing point for the end of the bracelet. So you need to gauge what you're going to need here. So I'm just going to use my working thread to, I'm probably going to need two beads in there. So I'm just going to thread those two beads on. And then they fill that, that little gap there. And then another two beads just to fill that gap in between those two. And then I'm going to turn around and come back. So I'm going to put two more beads and I'm going to go through those two beads that I just placed on my bracelet. Take my needle through them. See where I'm going. Just pull that tightly. And then I'm going to take another two and thread my needle back through those two beads on the end. And then it doesn't matter about the fact that it's sort of undulating, I think that looks quite pretty. The next thing that we can do is to, while we've got our working thread right on the end, is to attach the end of the clasp. So you'll do exactly the same thing on both ends of your bracelet. So I'm just going to take my needle, let's move those beads out of the way for a second. You can see that my working thread is coming out of the last size 8 Miyuki bead there. So I'm just going to take my needle through that hot pink bead and through the next one so that I can then come up in the middle, right in the centre, with my thread. I'm going to take this half of my clasp, my magnetic clasp, and take my needle through the little loop on the end of it. And then I'm going to go through those two beads. Sorry, I'm just going to go through that one. Turn my, my piece over and then go back through into the end bead. So you can see um, I'm coming out of here and then I'm going to go back up through the hole in the class. You can do that several times just to make sure that you've got a lot of security because this is the, the part of the bracelet where it's going to get the most tugging and wear and tear. So taking that back up through one of the silver beads and then I'm going to go back through the hole in the clasp. Okay, so that is how you attach your clasp. Now, what I need to, to do now is to make sure that my working thread ends up over here. So I'm just going to thread my needle back through those beads there. Just release a little bit more thread. And so we got to down to the end and then I'm just going to take my needle back through that raspberry coloured bead, the very first one. And then I'm going to come up through the next raspberry coloured bead. So I'm going to show you the, the completed piece and as you can see we're going to be using three beads and we're going to be taking them across two of the Ato Delicas. So because we're 
we're along the second one. Just gonna load three beads up onto my needle. And then I'm gonna take my needle down into that very first raspberry colored delicate. So you can see we've then got almost like that, that little triad of beads, that little pyramid of beads there. And then you just wanna work your way across with your thread, take it down through the next bead and then up through the pink one and again so you're almost sort of working backwards so I'm gonna load up the three beads on my needle whoops <laughs> so knock them off and take them down through the next bead and you'll see what happens is you're creating this lovely little pattern and um, you're just going to do that all the way along and you're going to repeat the process of um, using your, your tail thread just to attach some of those silver beads on the end and using your working thread to, to then attach your clasp and work you, your way back over to the, to the other end of the bracelet. Now, if your thread runs out before you get to the other end, um, a top tip is just to, um, to take your thread and to thread it through one of a, a new piece of thread, thread it through one of those Ato silver beads and tie a knot in it and then just secure, work the, the thread back through some of the other beads and tie it off so that you can, uh, you can get started again. So that is how you will make your bracelet. I'm just going to bring in the finished article there and you can see it's a really pretty little pattern. This would look so effective in different colours so do experiment with it but um, the metallic clasp makes it really easy to take on and off. So I hope you've enjoyed the project. So I hope you've enjoyed the video today and please do make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of our future tutorials. We release them very regularly and also make sure that you leave a comment and like this video if you've enjoyed it and take a look in the show more section where you'll find links to all of the products we've used and all of the thousands of other products that we have on our website. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you very soon.